hello and welcome back. And what have we got here on the table today? Well, we've got a half a TB drive here. We've got a 2 TB drive there. Got another 2 TB here, another 2 TB over here. And a big old pile of 128 gig and 256 gig USB drives. Yeah, well, there's about seven or eight TBs worth of storage there. But doesn't it look supremely inconvenient? Doesn't it look like clutter that's going to sit around a desk or in the bottom of your bag from now until the end of time? Well, today I want to talk about this. This is the Samsung T5 Evo. This is an 8TB external drive that will fit in your pocket. It's bus powered. It's massive and in this video i'm hoping i'm hoping you can help me decide whether i absolutely love this drive or i hate it there is this is a strange little external drive this isn't the first time we've talked about samsung here on the channel and it's certainly not even the first time in a month or so that we talked about them and their external drives they've been revisiting the majority of their external storage drives in the latter stages of 2023 and although we talked about the samsung t9 a short while ago an external ssd that was using usb 3.2 gen 2 x2 this is a far more traditional style of drive this t5 evo available in 2tb 4tb and a whopping 8tb knocks around for between 189 to 349 to 659 dollars that is a lot of whack you know what i mean so a lot of you are going to want to know whether spending more than half a grand on an ssd to fit in your pocket is actually going to be worth the money so let's crack on first thing we're going to talk about is the retail packaging Fairly boring, fairly standard. Opening up the box inside, we've got ourselves a little display there, a little lovely little case inside. We've got our accessory pack and included with this device, we receive um, a USB Type-C to C rubber cable there and our quick start installation guide and information on our warranty. Now, immediately, even before I get to the contents of this box, I've got my first very early complaint. This is something I was worried about when I was reading a lot of the information about this device online before it arrived here. And unfortunately, it looks like it is true. Number one, it only arrives with a USB-C to C cable there. It's a good cable, you know, reasonable quality, you know, good rubberized cabling as well there. But no type A adapter and no USB A to C cable either. This is just C to C in terms of cabling, which is really disappointing to me. And I understand we live in an age we have to be very aware of e-waste. I get it, but not everyone's using USB Type C at the moment. And I, although you know, shifts with like EU production and indeed global production are moving more and more devices, including your iPhone, over to dedicated USB C. I'll tell you right now, not everyone's engaged on that, and particularly, and we'll go into more detail about this later, for a drive that is USB 3.2 Gen 1, so 5 gigabits per second connectivity, again, really annoying for later, this is a drive that is using a, frankly, very old style of USB in modern technology stakes. So the fact that it doesn't arrive with a Type-A adapter for the end to clip on, or a Type-A cable to Type-C cable really disappoints me. Another thing that really disappoints me about this is, as useful as this is to give us more information on Samsung Magician, which, by the way, spoiler alert, I still absolutely love. More on that in, later in the video. But for all the information it gives you, the other thing it touches on is the warranty. This drive arrives with three years of manufacturer's warranty. And it's an SSD. It's an external SSD. The SSD inside this, whether it's custom made or using an off-the-shelf Samsung drive in a unique enclosure, you can't get SSDs these days pretty much anywhere with less than five years of warranty. Why is this rocking out the gate with three years of warranty when the SSD inside, be it custom again or ready-made off-the-shelf and they're putting it in the enclosure, should be five years? That really disappoints me about this i feel like i'm getting really down about this drive let's move forward because right now i want to i want to feel good about this i want to like this drive because we are talking about an eight terabyte pocket drive and i mean pocket drive it is a fraction over 100 grams i think it's 103 grams it is a drive that is powered by usb so you don't need a bulky external adapter 
This is a drive, pull it out, connect it to your device, and it will work. It has two meters drop protection as well, which again, given it's an SSD, I really like that. And it's got that rubberized coating there that's gonna protect it when it's in transit, but also with the entire enclosure from the lid all the way down to that bottom area there being metal, that's gonna act as supreme heat dissipation across no doubt the double density of NAND inside for this to achieve 8TB of storage. 8TB drives in both Gen 3 and Gen 4, NVMe and the NAND that's utilized these days um, on those boards of PCB, that NAND is getting denser and denser all the time. But ATB drives, with the exception of QLC quad layer cell NAND, um, has you know only really been around for a short while. For example, this is the Adlink A95. This is one of the first ATB drives we reviewed on the channel, and that knocks around for about six to seven hundred pounds. This drive, again, ATB, and again, its price tag isn't low at six hundred and fifty-nine dollars RRP. But I will say right now, the ATB kind of makes sense at that price point there. It's obviously, if you went for an external 3.5 inch drive and rammed that in an external enclosure with its own external power, you could probably get away with a three to maybe 400 nicker price point there. So you wouldn't make a savement, but then you're gonna be st uh, weighed down with a mechanical hard drive and you're gonna be weighed down with a local mains pad PSU. Bus powered, low powered, and lovely fast SSD inside. But it's not that fast, is it? Because, as mentioned earlier on, USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabits per second connectivity there. That means that even though we're rocking an SSD, and even though, you know, chances are we are looking at M.2 level or NVMe SSD storage inside for the sake of easy production by Samsung, this can only hit 460 megabytes per second sequential read and 460 megabytes per second sequential write. Now, those numbers are not a question of the hardware architecture in this drive aiming up to reach those numbers. That is 460 megs bottlenecked. If this drive here is running on either four or eight squares of flash NAND inside for the storage architecture inside to achieve that 8 TB, that amount of storage NAND being read and written from simultaneously would massively um, outpace the USB connectivity of this drive there. Why, 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 Delilah, is this not a Thunderbolt drive? Why is it not USB 3.2 Gen 2 at 10 gig? Why isn't it even that rather annoying USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 that the T9 drive arrived with? No, we've got old style USB here, and even if this drive is running on standard M2, M.2 SATA storage inside, that amount of NAND inside in this capacity should allow for a larger performance number overall. Circling back to the design though, I do quite like this drive and the way it looks. They've done a really good job of making it pocket size. Certainly just the right amount of weight to not be bothersome, but also know that it is there. And also that key loop there at the top is going to be quite handy too. It is something of a dust magnet. Um, even when I got it out of the box, it did not take long before this drive had already picked up most of the lint in my surrounding environment there. And again, that's something you're going to have time and time and again as you're pulling this out of your pocket, which clearly it is designed to be used for. But I still like the design. Samsung definitely know their way around designing an enclosure USB, an enclosure for a USB drive. Of course, there are some reasons why going for the option of traditional USB connectivity at Gen 1 makes a lot of sense. There are users out there, again, Android or iOS users, that with their mobile phone are going to look for a local means to back up the contents of their phone. And if you wish, you can go ahead, connect this drive directly to a USB connected device. Again, as you can see, it will appear there on your device and you can start navigating where the option is straight into your standard file folder manager here. So again, regardless of whether you're a PC, a Mac user or a mobile user looking to do a large scale backup, there are good reasons to go for such a large capacity drive, particularly if you want to back up the content of your phone nice and quickly with numerous third party apps and indeed first party apps to help you back up your photos and video directly onto a drive like this and then carry over to your desktop workstation there i get the appeal i'm just really really surprised at them going for arguably a much older school connection when there are faster ones out there that allow 
to take advantage of the additional capacity that this is spitting out. Now, talking of more modern approaches to a lot of these things, this does also support encryption, 256-bit encryption to be precise, of the data inside. And you can even use the Samsung Magician tool that we'll talk about later on to add additional safeguards to this drive. Let's head our way over to the desktop PC and take a little look about what happens when we connect this to our system and have a look at Samsung's Magician's pros and cons with this drive. Now unsurprisingly, as soon as we connected that drive to our Windows PC and I already had Samsung's Magician software installed, it immediately appeared there. And as soon as it did, we could see that this drive needed a firmware update and indeed, the regular firmware updates is something um, Samsung tend to be on top of quite a lot. Now, as much as I want to include just how good Samsung Magician software is with this review, it's worth highlighting that the Samsung Magician software is available completely for free without buying this drive. Indeed, if you do use that software, you can even use some of the features that are included here with third-party drives. So as good as Samsung Magician is, I do think we have to at least add the caveat that that software is something you can get anyway without purchasing this drive. Now, benchmarks performed from the software itself told us that we could see 447 megabytes per second average read, 446 megabytes per second average write, and that's sequential data as well. Um, and then on top of that, with the IOPS there at 4K random, um, well over 50,000 and 36,000 write, uh, sorry, read and write respectively there. Now, again, I would expect an ATB SSD to get higher than these numbers, but of course, because we are looking at the bottleneck of USB 3.2 Gen 1, we're going to, unfortunately, be capped quite substantially. One thing I will say for this drive is you can still go ahead and if you wish, bung on passwords and protection on these drives in line with that AES 256 bit encryption we talked about earlier on. But sadly, there isn't support of secure erase on this drive, which is a real shame for those of you that years down the line might wanna make sure this drive is suitably deleted. Same goes to some of the other features of Samsung Magician which are not supported on this drive. Another feature that's not supported is performance optimization. Again, because of this drive's bottleneck there, even if you were able to optimize the SSD itself, you're still gonna have that tremendous limiting factor of USB 3.2 Gen 2 throughout. Now, we're running a diagnostic scan, which is always good to see that you can check the blocks and the health of any drive uh, with Samsung's um, initiative here with that software. But again, you can use a lot of these uh, settings for third-party drives sometimes, although not always, as you can see there. But ultimately, even though we've run that big benchmark, because of that limiting factor of the USB, temperatures are not really gonna get exceedingly high on this drive either throughout the course of this testing. Ultimately, as much as I like Samsung's Magician software, and I really, really do, I still think we are utilizing a drive here that has been bottlenecked substantially. Let me kind of dig into that just a fraction more. Remember there at the introduction when I had loads of drives there on the table? As good as this Samsung is and being an 8TB and portable, as great as all that is, this drive is slower than 50% of the drives that were on the table at the time. Now there is our USB Type-C cable that this drive arrives with, which is USB 3.2 Gen 1. But in another world, another life, another universe, this drive could have and should have been a Thunderbolt equipped device. It should have been utilizing Thunderbolt architecture to really make the most of that performance, to get to 3000 megabytes per second. Indeed, in another universe, another life, another world, it could have been USB 4 connectivity. It could have been USB 3.2 Gen 2X2. All of those would have given us greater degrees of performance there. But on top of that, as good as that price point is, in relation to the capacity and the convenience of the device, I might add with a big caveat before you say it in the comments, it's worth highlighting that this isn't the only horse in the race right now. And there are other options out there. So if you're in love with going with a Samsung device, get yourself a Samsung SSD. You can get some great 970, 980, 990 Pro drives at 1, 2, 4 TB. There's even bigger drives on the horizon. And then get yourself an external storage enclosure like this one. This is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 case. And with this, you could have gone ahead, grabbed this enclosure, and I believe this is about 80 or 90, maybe 100 quid now. Um, and you can get this, install one of these inside that, and yeah, you'll have to get an 8TB drive, which as we mentioned earlier, is super pricey, but at the very least, you could have a drive that arguably, although it is bigger than the one in this hand, it's not out of this world bigger, and they're both 
USB powered, I might add. So the result is that you are getting a convenient drive, but you are getting bottlenecked. And there are other drives in the market that give you 4 TB of storage, but substantially more performance than this. And now we're seeing more uh, providers roll out 8 TB drives. The market's only going to get a little busier. So at the moment, at the time of recording, this 8 TB drive is very, very desirable for what you're getting, given its uniqueness in the marketplace. Even Sabrent, a brand that produced their own SSDs at 2, 4, and even 8 TB, barely have 8 TB external storage to combat this kind of scale. But what they do have, along with other brands, is faster drives. Dual M2 NVMe storage base and Thunderbolt and USB 4 storage drives. And ultimately, that is the biggest threat to this drive. And moreover, and this is directly to you, Samsung, if you're watching this small YouTube channel, who knows? Um, I will say right now, given that the target audience for this drive is almost certainly some kind of photo, video, content creatives, because that's kind of Samsung's wheelhouse, what they really go for, most of those users are rocking MacBooks. So most of those users are running USB 3.2 Gen 2 or Thunderbolt connectivity. So they're going to get massively bottlenecked by this drive. And I think they would rather pay more for a faster drive than they would pay more for a larger capacity where it's gonna take longer to move 4K raw and bigger. Ultimately, I think this is a drive that is bottlenecked way, way too much by that connector. In most other regards, it's a great drive, but it is not going to age well. And that's a real bummer for me. So in summary, what do I like? I like the physical size of this. I like the lightness of this. I like the capacity size of this at 8TB. That is a breath of fresh air. I love Samsung Magician. And I like the cross-platform support between my mobile devices and my desktop devices. I overall love the design, in fact. And I think it's a very sleek, good-looking drive. But, flip side, it's a dust magnet, man. It is a dust magnet. It doesn't have that USB Type-A cable or a Type-A adapter included. It has three years of warranty, when in my opinion it should have five. And that interface there is the biggest hurdle of all. And it's one of those things that I think Samsung should have really gone back to the drawing board over. Ultimately, this is a good drive. But it is a good drive seemingly built on compromise. And if that is a problem for you, there are better options out there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments if you did. If you need further support or assistance or just some general help choosing the right storage solution for your small indie setup or your giant business, use the free advice section over on NAS Compares, the right hand side of every page. Use the Discord or the community forum ask.nascompares or head over to Ko-Fi or Patreon to get access to our perf preferred and expedited support. You can even hire me there for one-to-one -one consultation if you choose, or just take advantage of all the free stuff. That's your bag. That's cool. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.